and hello everyone welcome back to another flask tutorial so in this tutorial we'll be talking about cookies and what they do and how you use them so let's start from the top and just create ourselves a basic flask app again so from flask import flask you need to get create an app called Fla or app and then you just say flask and pass in our name and then we can just define a route so at app dot route and we just say forward slash define index which just means the index page and then return hello and then at the end we can just say if name is main app dot run and then we just set debug to true Cool, if you could do all of this from memory yourself, then well done. Now if we run it, we should get a basic flask app working out of the box. And it seems like there might be some deprecated stuff here, so you might want to change your flask env to rather say flask debug. So in the future, instead of saying flask env, when you export, just do flask debug. And there we go, there's a hello. Now, what is a cookie? You might have seen this a lot of times when you go onto a website and this website says, hey, do you accept all the cookies we give or we take? A cookie is just a small bit of storage. It is stored like on the user computer. So when you go to a website, it can store some information about you on that website. For example, let's say you go to a website and you want the language to be Japanese instead of English. So you set the language to Japanese. That website might then create a cookie stored on your computer. And then when you visit that website again, it will search for that cookie and it will see, hey, you wanted to make the language of this website Japanese. So then it will default you to Japanese again. Or if you log in, it can store a login token as a cookie onto your website or onto that website. So then when you try to log in again, it will automatically log you in because it already has a cookie with some storage saved up. Or if you want to say light or dark mode, then you can just say dark mode and it will create a cookie that will save that you like this in dark mode. You can see it as a way for the developers to not necessarily have to store your data into their database but could instead store it on your browser so your data is on your browser so with this knowledge let's create a basic login system that now uses cookies to log the user in so I'm going to create another route so at app dot route and this can be slash login and then just the username so here you can say username we don't care what the username is in this case because this is just an example to get an idea of how cookies work. We then define a login function and it will just take in a username. And in here, we can finally start creating our cookie data. First of all, you need to know a little bit about headers. You don't need to know a lot because Flask already does a lot of the managing of headers for you. But the basic idea is that a header is a small piece of information about the website that is sent to the browser. So when you go to the browser, it will store this header information or will know this header information and be able to set a few data or a few values for you. Now you don't need to know a lot about this, but when we say res is equal to make response and we can just say hello. And then of course we need to import make response from Flask. And this will allow us to set additional headers, which will allow us to use cookies. But now you can also add your own custom header. So res.headers. So if you ever need to work with headers, you can just do this and what your header is called. For example, my header. This could be like an authentication token or something like that. And then you can just make it whatever you need it. This is my header. And now this res is what we're going to return. So we can just say return res. 
Risk will return all of the information we need. Now, if we want to set a cookie, we can just go res.set cookie. And this will set a cookie for us. So now we can give it what we need. For example, the username, username, because they, when they log in, they have a username. Take note, you should never save the user password inside of a cookie. Even if you encrypt it, do not save the user password in a cookie because anyone can see what is stored inside of this cookie. So if someone codes a malicious script to get all of your cookies in your browser and your password is set inside of a cookie, it can basically be exposed to the user who wrote that script. So never save a password inside of a cookie. And then you can give it the value it should have. In this case, we can just say username because we get username from here. You can then say max age. And this is these all of these are optional. So max age, it is optional. And max age is the oldest a cookie can become in seconds. So if we say 60, then its max age would be 60 seconds. So after 16, 60 seconds, this cookie will expire. And this website can no longer use this cookie because it has expired. You can also set expires and this could take in a date instead. So if you don't want to set max age, you instead want to give it a specific date it should ex expire at, then you can put it in here. But we can just say none because we already have a max age. And then we can give it a path. And this is the page that the cookie is allowed to be accessed at or when the cookie is being requested. By default, it is forward slash. So what the value we have here. Then you can also specify secure. Secure means that this cookie can only be sent over HTTPS. So we say true. Then if we try and send this cookie over HTTP, then it won't be able to send this cookie because it's not HTTPS. HTTP only. By default, this is false. And this means if JavaScript can access cookies. So if JavaScript should be able to access cookies, you should change this. So we can just say true. And then finally, same site. So you might have heard people talking about cookies that can be shared across sites. This is what this is for. We want to say none because we only want this cookie to be able to be read from our site. No other site should be able to see this cookie. All right. And just like that, we are good to go. So let's try and go here. If we go to slash login and give our username. So login and let's say Mike. Cool. Nothing is currently being returned because currently I don't want anything to be returned. But now the cookie has been set. We can actually view this cookie by opening up our developer console here. You can do this also by right clicking and then saying developer tools and then inspect. All right. Then if we were to just go here and we were to instead go to application, I believe have a cookie tab then it will be here then here we go I'll remove this so here we have username Mike and then all of our data that we need so if I were to just make it like this and dock it on this side here we go so the priority is medium and here we have same site which is none secure HTTP only size I believe this is in kilobytes the expires at and since we said 60 seconds, it will expire in 60 seconds from when it was set. And in the path and in the domain. And the domain is just this right here. And that's the basics of setting the cookie. Now, what if we want to actually get this cookie? Well, then we can go here. At app.route, who am I? We can then go define who am I. And in here we can try request that cookie. So username is equal to request dot cookies dot get and in the cookie name. So in this case, username, because the cookie name here is username. 
We can also import request from Flask. And now we have the username. But take note, the username might not exist because the user may not actually have a cookie to store. So if you didn't set this cookie like they haven't logged in yet, then this username won't exist. So you can just say if not username, so the username has not been provided, return redirect and we can just redirect index and we can import redirect from Flask as well. Okay, and if they get to this point, then there would be a username because otherwise we would have returned another route. Then here we could just say return and we can return just a basic if string, maybe with an h1 that says you are logged in as, and then we can just pass in the username. And there we go. So you are logged in as and in the username. Cool. Now if we were to just close this here, refresh, then we have logged in again, and now we can go to who am I? You are logged in as Mike. Because that is what we logged in as when we went to this login and in the username. So that's how we get the cookie. If we were to go off of the site and then open it up again, this cookie would still be here. Well, at least for 60 seconds because max age is 60 seconds. And then finally, how do you delete a cookie? Remove it. Well, let's create another route. App.route logout define logout and here we can say res is again equal to make response render template and here we can just re render a nice html template logout dot html yet again we can import render template from flask and an res set cookie username and in here we just want to set the value equal to nothing when we do that it ex it removes the value from the cookie basically meaning this cookie doesn't exist anymore it's an empty value we can also set expires equal to zero meaning the cookie expires now and then we can of course return res and it should be app.route and now if we go to who am i we're actually being redirected and let me just see here let me just redirect to forward slash now if we go here again we're being redirected to our home page because our cookie has expired 60 seconds ago so it's no longer here so we need to go to username or login and then username so we go login mike okay and if we go who am i we get you're logged in as mike if we go log out oh template not found yes because we have not created that template yet uh, logout.html because it allows us to see that we can actually return a template in this res so make response and then render template so it doesn't necessarily have to be a piece of text, but you can actually render a template. This is data that's going to be shown when the user goes to this website. So render template is what will be shown. And here we can just have a basic HTML page. Just ignore all of this boilerplate. You don't need all of this. And we can say H1, you were logged out. So you can just put some basic HTML here that just says you were logged out. Cool, now we refresh, you were logged out. Okay, let's try again. So let's go to login Mike. We are now Mike. If I say, who am I? You are logged in as Mike. If I then log out, you were logged out. If I then go again to who am I? It just says hello because it took me back to the index page because I was logged out. My cookie has both expired and has been set to nothing. And that's the basics of working with cookies. They're just little tiny 
bits of storage we can use to store some information about the user if needed, like their preferences, like their settings, but if they go from one computer to another computer, their settings will basically reset. So the data that's stored here is basically non-important data that if the user switches from one computer to another computer, it wouldn't matter if this data is lost. And yeah, that's the basics of cookies. Thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all again in the next tutorial.